Welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Uh, today we got a 2013 Chevy Sonic. Throwing some lean codes. So we're going to take it through the diagnosis process, see if we can fix it, and get it back running the way it should be. So although it's always a good idea to um, scan, do an auto scan, and scan all the uh, control modules, we're going to just take a look here at the ECM and look right at our codes here. Um, and the one we're going to focus on is the P0171 uh, fuel system trim, fuel trim system lean. Look at our freeze frame data. And we're going to focus on the engine cooler temperature, long term, short term fuel trim, and let's see the barrel puncture. Okay, so um, engine cooler temperature sensor that is working properly. Um, and the barometric pressure, that's important, uh, just to make sure it doesn't think we're up in the Rockies or something, thinking the air is thinner than what it is. Um, and the short-term and long-term fuel trim, uh, that is a lot of overcorrection, adding, that's adding quite a bit of fuel for what it needs. Um, that points us to a vacuum leak or a probable vacuum leak. Um, we're going to go pop the hood and see what we can see. Ta 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 ta! Alright, Marie, tell me where you're at. Oh, so, so we looked at the free stream data. Okay. Saw that the fuel trims were extremely hot. Extremely hot. Long term and yeah. short term. Correct. The 35 with the 36. Long term plus short term is what, what do they call that? The average. Total fuel trim. Total fuel trim. Yep. Okay. Yes, so that means it's getting, it has too much oxygen in it, although can't see if there's too much oxygen in it. Or, or what else calls a lean code? Pirate air. Well, pirate air. Too much oxygen or not enough fuel. Fuel. Which is not to be assumed. Correct. Okay. So, now to, you can put the smoke machine on. All right, so you just looked at freeze frame data. Yes. Okay, that's fantastic. So looking at freeze frame data, I don't know if Miss Marie, I don't know if you guys can see me, has nope. really explained that. Uh, the benefit of it. Uh, so the reason we go and look at freeze frame data is because we want to get a clue as to when the lean problem occurred or when, you know, whatever engine problem you're looking at occurred, when that cord coat stored, I, I explained to Marie, it's like, uh, you know, the ECM took a selfie. It's like, hey, we got a problem. Duck lips, boom, there's a picture. Uh, reason that's important with lean problems is because they have a tendency to have, let's say we do have a vacuum leak, it'll only be there when it's really cold, but now when it's hot. So if she looks through freeze frame data, sees fuel trims are pegged right out, but only when it's, you know, 50 degrees, 60 degrees coolant temp, you know, that's a big clue for us. We don't want the engine to warm up. Uh, what should have been done next, Marie, is once you look at freeze frame data is, is the problem still happening? At that point, gotcha. I would have started the car, looked at fuel trims mm -hmm. and said, okay, well, you know, now you know that it happened at whatever the temperature was, 170 degrees, the engine was warmed up field trims were pegged out, I'd start it and try to duplicate it and see, yep, it's running, it still runs like poo, and then I'd go from there, if it were me, which it isn't. Okay. So that would be my next step. I'm gonna do that. Okay, so with that suggestion, we're gonna look at some live field trim data. And we see that our short term is running at about, hmm, we'll say 15 is that average, 15% long term 22 which means together we're at about 37 uh, let's see engine cooling temperature still good all right so yes is problem is still happening yep because now we're up at 27% 31. Alright, so what did you just tell the people? I told them that we're checking the live data to yep. see that it's still running pretty high. When we checked it before, yep. it was only the short term was only like 15%. Now it's up to 29, 30. Yep. And long term has stayed about the same at 35. So you have big old honking either vacuum leak and or you know lack of fuel or um, yeah, a bad mass airflow sensor. Remember if it can't if it can't compute how much air is entering the system, then you know it doesn't know how much fuel to add. So, right. uh, quick and dirty, 
I remember, I think when I showed you when I was working on this car, we rev it up. We want to reduce the manifold vacuum, and if mm -hmm. the fuel trim gets better, that usually usually indicates a vacuum leak. So hold it like 3,000 RPMs, probably about mm -hmm. this hold it right there. Keep going, keep going, more. Get rid of beans. You see, see, you see what happened to your short term trim? Oh yeah, it just went negative. Yeah. Negative. Got way better. Oh yeah. Now, now your total trim is only about 15 percent. Yeah. So go ahead and let it idle. Uh huh. So now you're building a lot of manifold vacuum right now. Once it gets back to an idle, and we'll see if it goes back crappy again. Sometimes it takes it a minute. Oh. I so can now feel I, it running a little crappy. Yep. Yeah. So being that we rubbed it up. We reduce manifold vacuum, fuel trim got better. That to me is a big telltale sign that you have a vacuum leak or that's a good place to start. Vacuum leak. Does that mean it's pirate air? No. Well, yes, air is entering the engine but not going through the mass airflow. It is not being measured. Do you know what a pirate's favorite letter is? A pirate's favorite letter? Well, if I had to guess, I would say it's the R. R. You may think it's the R, but it's actually the C. That's a pretty solid joke, Mary. Thank you. I was waiting for that. I appreciate anyway. that. All right, young lady. So now that I have shown you a couple little tricks to determine that is highly plausible that there's a vacuum leak on this engine, uh, I showed you one trick to find vacuum leaks, which is not a trick that I endorse, uh, which actually I kind of do, but it's dangerous. We sprayed it. The brake clean. The brake clean. Uh, I don't want Miss Marie doing that because that is dangerous and it can explode. And you should use propane. No uh, yeah, no fireworks, you know, burn it up. So what could you do or what are you going to do next? You suspect there's a vacuum leak, what can you do with the tools that you have to work like with? Like the Marie Safeway? Yes. I would probably put a smoke machine on it. I say we get out the Evoca Smoka and smoke it up. Sweet. All right, so I've got the, what I've learned is affectionately called, the Evoca Smoka. Hook it up here to the battery. Which is my least favorite part of the vehicle. We'll take off the air intake holes here, which is size flathead. Alright. And then we've got this sweet little diaphragm here thing here. It's kind of like a blood part cuff. Stick that in here. Block it off so that no air can get into it except for the smoky air. Put this up. You feel like a nurse. That should be good. Hook the smoke machine up in here. So, uh, on your little Hondu, mm -hmm. remember that part that I had you change because... PCV valve. The PCV, positive case ventilation. Not so to be confused with the PVC. Pipe. Yes. Correct. 
So your PCV. Uh, this valve cover has an integrated PCV valve. So you have the vacuum hose over here in the mm -hmm. corner nice. that comes up and hooks to the valve cover. And it has essentially that little valve that you change on your car that was like 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. Is the valve cover on this car? It's built into it. So it doesn't have one like in the back. Nope, nope. Just the hose hooks to it, and whatever that whatever the PCV mechanism is on this car is is integrated. So I don't know if there's a diaphragm. Uh, so just something between here and here is broken. Inside the valve cover has broke. The PCV diaphragm has ruptured. Its valve mechanism is stuck. Uh, something like that. I would assume it's a diaphragm. Easiest mm -hmm. way to tell is. You know, get rid of you. You already smoked it, right? Yeah, I said. did. Yes. So get get rid of your smoke machine. Uh -huh. Hook it back up, and if you're essentially putting smoke in the intake system, and you're blowing smoke out of here, I can only assume that vacuum, full vacuum, is making it into the engine. So you can start up, pull the oil dipstick, start up, pull the oil cap off. I would recommend that. How dirty that is, I'd recommend pulling the oil dipstick. In which case. With a good PCV system, when you open your oil cap or open your dipstick, you should have kind of neutral air. It shouldn't have any pressure, shouldn't have any any vacuum. Okay. So well, I'll try that. Yeah, we start it up for you. That'd be great. Could you start it up for me, Eric? Everything's okay. Everything's hooked up and ready. All right, fire the hole. Yep. All right, then pull dipstick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, there might be a little tiny. It's going to stall if you open that back. Put it back. So we can demonstrate that. Let me get it back. Okay. Oh wow, you can hear it. Suction my finger. Yeah, open that diaphragm. All right. But if we get this and this. What's that? Back engage. Oh, maybe. The gauge of vacuum. Vacuum. <laughs> yeah, kid. So pull your oil to stick out and see if it. Let's stay running. Oh, oh, stick, stick, oop. Oh, ah. man. T take your dipstick all the way out. Okay. That's obviously your problem, lady. You think? Just hold that over it. Okay. You ready? Yep. Keep your digits out of the way. How much vacuum do you have? We have a little over 15, 16. Yeah, about, about, uh, about 14 inches of mercury. Oh, 14. In the crankcase. I said it should be around zero. Oh. We're a little bit off. Yeah. So, you have excessive crankcase vacuum from mm -hmm. a ruptured diaphragm. Uh, so Volkswagen's pretty famous for this. They use a very similar PCV system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we're right in the assessment of a vacuum leak. Mm -hmm. um, it's vacuum leaking there. Plus, it's pulling whatever air it can suck into the crankcase, whether it's going to suck So it's pulling it in from everywhere. Because yeah, there's, 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 there's a leaky vacuum. gasket, leaky seal, yeah. anything. It's going to suck air through it. Fortunately, in this case, you know, it has this hole. So it's probably sucking the majority of its pirate air through there. So that's through why... There. The, yeah, through there. <laughs> so uh, we need the whole new valve cover. The whole new shebang, yes. Uh, and the reason it seems lean or running lean it's because this air mm -hmm. is making it you know into the intake manifold and into the cylinders and yep. it's not going through right so this guy doesn't even know what's going on nope so he, back door is open he doesn't know it yep back door is open and everybody's getting into his party and he's not not nobody's accounting for so the only way that it can calculate the amount of fuel that it needs uh is well one of the ways one of the major players is the mass airflow sensor so um, you can be tricked. You can take and unplug that mass airflow sensor, run it on a default strategy, and this engine will run fine then, uh, because then it's not taking into account metered air. So I think I showed you that trick. Substituted yes. values, it's called. Uh, which you can make the wrong call on, because you unplug the mass airflow, all of a sudden your fuel trims are good, it's still in closed loop, but now the engine goes from being a speed density engine working off mass airflow to working off a MAP sensor, and a MAP sensor could really care less if there's a vacuum leak uh, when it comes to fuel trim. So probably a little TMI right there, but something to take into account. Something to learn. Also, okay. I think it's time for a shout out. Woo, woo. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. What, whose videos were you watching to, oh, to start yeah, to that's learn? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching Mike's videos. From? Uh, from Wells. Which is now? NGK. 
So Mike over at NGK, if you guys want to know more about field trimming and how Marie's starting oh, to kind of Oh, yeah, dabble. no, it's really cool. He's got he's got two of them. One was from April. I think the other one was from June. He did um, a video. First was on um, fuel trim and data in general, like how it works. And that's where I learned my new word, stoichiometric. So, because it's the it's the air to fuel ratio, 14.7 to 1. And he had like a really cool trick that he did with the glasses of water and stuff. Yeah, right? 14.7 to, to 1. Yeah, to show that. Yeah, the difference between a 2 liter and a 6 liter. Yep. Still run 14.7 yep. to 1 AFR. Now, not all engines always run at 14.7 to 1. Right, but that's the most efficient. That is the most common. It's the easiest way to start this. You can really get into the chewbacca with people and the big debate that 14.7 right. to 1 is not stoichiometric. But right. Well, for that's, you just starting out, yeah, that's what I'm just assume for. that. And then the next video he did, which was the next month, was where they were diagnosing the GTO that he had there with the vacuum leak. Yep, with the lean code. Yep. But he brings out in that video a lot of great points on PO171s, 172, 174, 175. So lean and rich on bank one, bank two engines and the different things that can cause them. Everything from vacuum leaks to purge solenoids to uh, fuel pressure regulators to mass airflow sensors to injectors. Uh, it's one of those codes that you get when you go to the auto zone they cannot sell you a part because the code doesn't tell you what part to change this is where you have to use logic and go through and find out why does it run lean you know too much air fuel delivery you know stuff like that so uh, great video link in the description i've sent you guys over to wells make sure when you go see them tell them marie sent you that's all right all right well there you have it um this is my first diagnosis on lean codes and we're still learning a couple of the steps, ways to uh, figure it out, work around things that, things like scan tools, which I'm not very familiar with, but I will get more familiar with. And the only way to learn is by doing, right? So thanks for watching. Um, if you want, go ahead and leave a comment, question, criticism while you're down there. Ring the bell, hit subscribe, and uh, maybe next video we'll get to show you how to repair it, fix the valve cover on this, um, and for now, that's it. So, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.